In this episode, we're going to take a look at what's new and cool in Microsoft Exchange Online. So stick around, you might learn something. Greetings YouTubers, Andy here. Welcome back to the channel. I really appreciate you stopping by. On this week's episode, I thought we would get to grips with Microsoft Exchange Online. Specifically, we're going to take a look at some of the new and cool features in the Admin Center. And of course, a lot of this comes because of your requests, by the way. So this was actually somebody's request previously. Now, if you do have any requests for any kind of interesting sessions that you'd like me to cover, or you've got any questions, comments, get them down below and I will do my best uh, to help you out. All right. And also, if you've not subscribed to the channel, then go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you'll not miss out on the good stuff in the future. So without any more jibber jabber, let's get to this week's demo on Exchange Online. Let's take a look. So here we are in the Exchange Online Admin Center, and we're going to take a look at some of the new and cool features that are in here. So first of all, you'll see that we've got a brand new kind of interface. Now, although you can still get to the classic Exchange Admin Center down here, um, that is pretty much kind of dead in the water now, and they're going to be switching that off um, in the next few weeks. Now, I'll... On top here, you'll see a traditional kind of Microsoft 365 experience with your various uh, cards here that you can see and you can move those around and you can also add new cards here. So there are a number of different cards here. So if you want to have a look at things like recent alerts, things like outbound message details, um, domain um, mail flow status. Some of these can be really cool. And as I say, you can just simply drag and you can drop those uh, on your page. So you can easily customize these. Um, so let's have a quick look at some of the new kind of layouts. So we're going to have a look in recipients here. And if I go into mailboxes, everything looks pretty good. Everything looks uh, familiar. You'll notice um, that we have this kind of um, spreadsheet type interface now and we have the columns um, you can also filter everything as well and you can also customize those columns as well so if there's additional things and you can see there are quite a few additional things here that you might want to bring in okay so that's uh, kind of cool and also you would find out actually if your recipient type is a mailbox or if it's a resource if it's online or if it's on premises if it's a for example a hybrid resource now the other really important thing and a great tip for you guys um, is when you send email um, you sometimes might get email messaging bouncing because the message size it says, you know, that the recipient uh, email uh, will not accept a certain size of message. Well, you can change that up here. And this is the default message size for your organization. And you can see here by default, it's actually set to 35 megs. But you can actually change it to 150 megs. So all I do is just copy that across and you can do that send and receive limit. And this is the maximum size uh, that you can have. And that's it. That's all it does. It takes about five minutes to kind of filter through the organization. So let's have a look at some of the other cool settings uh, that we have. So I'm going to go into Adele's mailbox here. And again, everything looks really nice. Now, the one thing that I will do is what I'll do is I'll just bring up the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and I'll go into Users here and I'm going to go into Adele's Microsoft uh, 365 user account details. And one thing to note is that the two interfaces are now starting to kind of merge a little bit more. So both interfaces, you'll see that we now have mail tabs here. You also have group details. So if I click onto the mail tab, this is a really nice kind of shortcut to see things like mailbox permissions, send as, send on behalf of. 
Now, just to remind you, send as is actually you're sending as that person. So if you wanted to give some another user Adele's um, mailbox permission, this is almost like James Bond and Moneypenny. So uh, Moneypenny would be able to send email as James Bond, whereas on this case, it would be on behalf of James Bond. Yes. Um, you can see the global address list. So do you want Adele to appear in what we call the gal? Um, automatic replies. So again, you can manage automatic replies for users. So um, rather than the user having to configure like a, an out of office messages or an automatic reply, you can actually set this up um, on behalf of your uh, user, which is a really nice uh, feature actually. Um, the other thing that we also have here is we've got email apps. Now, really important, uh, I would say, um, manage the email apps. So we've got Outlook, of course, we've got the exchange services, and you've also got the mobile features here. But we also have activated a couple of old protocols. So the post office protocol, POP, and IMAP, these are pretty old protocols. And I would say that um, you probably don't want to use these. The reason being is because they these protocols don't support multi-factor authentication. So again, really, you don't want your users coming in on old um clients old software uh, because it could potentially be a security breach um other things that we've got here you've got things like um email forwarding so um you know adele might be out of the office or she's going on vacation and you want to forward her email to a different user again you can do that uh, if you want to um so other things that we've got, you can, this is kind of cool. You can convert, um, let's say Adele's leaving the company. You can convert Adele's mailbox to become what we call a shared mailbox. So if she's working with a, let's say a sales team or something like that. So I can say, yep, yeah, okay, I'm going to go and share this. Users won't sign into a shared mailbox with a site with a username uh, and password, so it doesn't work like that. So basically, you need to grant other users access to Adele's mailbox. Now, the cool thing about this is once you have converted it to a shared mailbox and you then think, OK, well, actually, um, somebody else is taking over Adele's account or perhaps Adele is coming back. Don't worry about it. You simply go back into here and you scroll back down. And again, I can then say, OK, um, do you want to uh, convert this back again? All right. So again, I can just click onto the mail and yet yeah, you can see here that I can also, I can edit the exchange properties here. Um, I can also um, uh, convert this back to a regular mailbox uh, if I want to. Now, if I go back into the exchange admin center here, let me just refresh this page. So if I'm just gonna refresh this now because Adele's mailbox is a potentially a shared mailbox. Just wait for this to come in. OK, and I'm going to click on to her mailbox here. Now, you can see I can now convert it back to a regular mailbox. So everything that Adele was um, and is now gets converted back. Um, the only thing is, of course, a mailbox does require a license, whereas a shared mailbox only requires the users, users to have a license. All right. Um, OK, so that's kind of cool. Uh, just close that down and bring that up again. So other things that we've got in the email settings this time, um, you've got the mailbox permissions again. That's nice to see that in two separate places, by the way. So either in the 365 admin center or in the exchange admin center. You can also manage litigation hold. And the reason why that's grayed out is because I've just converted it to be a a shared mailbox that can sometimes the UI takes a, a few moments to come back in. But you can see if I click back on here, I can uh, add that to this mailbox here. 
So I've got Alan's mailbox and litigation hold is quite useful um, for one reason or another. Maybe he's got an issue with HR. Maybe he's leaving the company, something like that. There is a legal issue. So what you can do is you can place his mailbox on what we call litigation hold. Now, Alan can continue to use his mail Everything will function, mail continues to flow. The only difference is his recycle bins are never emptied. So if Alan is trying to hide something, then it's not going to work for him. All right. Um, managing the mailbox archives, of course, again, depending on your plan, um, you can switch the archive on or off. And uh, just to remind you that this is a premium feature. Um, now, if you have a smaller business account, you can still get this. This is a kind of a standalone uh, feature as well. Um, group memberships. And also you can add in things like custom attributes here, which is, uh, again, a nice feature. Um, you can see here how much mailbox has been used. Also, when the user last logged in, that's a nice touch. And we've also got our mailbox policies here as well. So in your mailbox policies, you might have, you might pick up, for example, the thing, the default sharing role assignment, the uh, mailbox retention policy, and also if your company has got an address book policy. Please note that you can also manage your mail flow settings here for this particular user. So you, things like mail forwarding, you can also uh, manage message size restrictions. You can see here there's a discrepancy between the UI and what I've just done here. So I've just updated this to 150. It can take a few minutes to come in. It's not that this is a problem. It's just sometimes the UI takes a little bit of time to, to uh, come in. Okay, so that is the user types. Now, what else is new in 365 here? Well, you can see here, you've got this context men, uh, menu. So if you select multiple objects here, you can see that the menu changes accordingly. Um, also, you've got a watch out for the ellipses here because there are extra menu items. So again, you can, can you've got that conversion and you can also manage that mailbox uh, delegation there as well. All right. Now, um, I previously did a video on Microsoft 365 groups, but um, I need to come in and just talk about uh, groups in uh, Exchange Online. And look at this. We have a Microsoft 365 group here. So you can see here that these are Microsoft 365 groups. You can also see which groups have been converted to Teams. And just to point out, if you've not seen that video, go ahead um, and have a look at that video. That's really interesting, by the way. Other types of groups that we have in Exchange, we've got a distribution list. So a distribution list is exactly as it says. It's just a contact list. There's no permissions or anything like that. There's no interactivity in it at all. Um, you can also have a mail enabled security group. So this is a group, for example, in Exchange or in SharePoint that you want to assign permissions to, but you want it to have a little bit of interactivity. So um, that's the reason why we have a mail enabled security group. Something that's not available in any other portal is this. This is the dynamic distribution list. So you can create a group here um, to be a, a dynamic distribution list. So I can say, yeah, okay, I wanna create a new distribution list and you can see it sends mail to all members of the group. The group membership is updated every 24 hours. All right. So, for example, if I call this my Oslo, um, I'll call this Oslo Marketers. OK, and I'm going to you can put in a little description if you want to. And I can say, do I want to put in an owner? Well, I've got a user here called Megan. So I'm going to put Megan in. And you can see what kind of recipients do you want to be in the group? So you can have all recipient types. So or you can specify only users with mailboxes, mailbox, mail users with external email addresses, 
resource mailboxes, that's like things like meeting rooms and so on, mail contacts with external email addresses, or mail enabled groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yeah, okay, mail anyone with a mail enabled group, and I'm going to, you can set a condition if you want, and I can say, okay, the company or the department. So I'm going to say the company uh, with sales. So basically anyone that's in the sales department will automatically become a member of this group. And you can add an additional rule. You can do an and or uh, option here. And that's a really nice feature, by the way. So I can go and put a, a group name in. So I'll call this my Oslo Marketers. Okay. So I have now put that uh, group in. And that is now a dynamic group. So anybody, any group that's in the sales department, anyone that's in a sales department will now automatically become a member of this dynamic distribution group. Isn't that cool? Very nice feature. Okay, so that is what we call a dynamic dis distribution list or a dynamic distribution group, depending on whatever you want to call it. All right. The other things that you can also do here that's kind of cool is you can also add a naming policy. So your, for example, you might want to, let's say, have a, um, a an attribute or a piece of text in front um, and you can create a suffix um, or a prefix. So you can either do a suffix or a prefix. So, for example, Oslo sales, Oslo production. Oslo marketing. Get the idea? That's, again, a really nice time-saving uh, tip. Other things that we've got here, we've got uh, resources. Um, so again, I can create a resource group here, and this can either be a piece of equipment, for example, a projector or something like that, company car, or you can have a meeting room as well, all right? And you can create these meeting rooms um, and this is a really nice feature, all right, because you can then, uh, obviously, you, people can go in and they can schedule, they can book uh, the meeting rooms and so on. Other things that we've got here, we've got contacts, and these are just external contacts. Um, so any contacts that you add in, for example, in Azure Active Directory or B2B, business to business, they will typically go in here. Mail flow I covered recently on a video, so go ahead and check that out. Um, that's just in my uh, recent video list. I'll put a link to that, um, or I'll include that uh, video uh, at the end of this. Um, we have roles, or RBAC. Now, RBAC, of course, is really important, and we know that there are many, obviously the global admin in Microsoft 365 is God, but you can also have, each of the applications also have their own subset of administrator roles. So for example, an Exchange administrator. Now, when you come into Microsoft Exchange here, you can see that in fact, there are quite a lot of sub roles within Exchange. And some of these actually bleed over into Microsoft 365 as well. Um, again, I've done a recent video on RBAC or role-based admin. So please feel free to go and check that out. I love this, by the way, the migration tab. So in the past, migration, I'll be honest, was a bit of a nightmare. But now we can create a new migration batch straight from here so I can just if I just call this batch one and you can specify am I migrating in or out of exchange obviously in this case in and you can now choose a migration type so um, an IMAP migration um, is basically this would just bring across email it, it doesn't bring across contacts or calendars or anything like that. So, for example, if you had a Gmail account, something like that, it would bring that across. OK, um, please note you would typically use IMAP along with a PST migration. So a personal store that would bring in the con the contacts and the calendars. Um, but typically you would need to pre-create the user account 
in Microsoft 365 and you would need to create the mailbox. And this is essentially just a connector from the old account to the new account and it pulls the email in. The the other things that we've got new, uh, we've got a cross-tenant migra- migration. That's a really uh, very cool feature. So if you've already got a Microsoft 365 tenant, let's say you're doing acquisitions and mergers, this is very cool. The difference between uh, cutover and stage, they're very similar. Typically, um, uh, this would be a very small organization, a small migration. You might do this over a weekend. Um, whereas if you've got a larger organization, you might want to batch those users in and bring them in you know, by department or something like that. A remote move migration is hybrid. So this is a, essentially it gives you a an additional license for an exchange server, which you run as a hybrid server. And I'll cover this in a future topic, actually, because it's quite interesting. All right. So that is the different types of migration. I, again, really nice uh, to see that here. Um, Other things that we've got new, we've also got, you've got reports. So again, you can pull off a migration report and also a mail flow report here. Um, We've also got insights. Um, So the insights, again, there's not a lot to see here at the moment uh, because I'm not doing much in my exchange, but you get some nice Power BI graphics um, to show you how, you know, how heavily your uh, organization is being used and and so on. Other things that you can configure, this is the organizational settings for sharing. So uh, the sharing, um, again, you can go into some of these, um, this particular screen here, you'll notice it's actually the same screen that we had in the classic portal. So this is an example where the screen hasn't been updated yet. So you, there's two types of sharing, and we're talking about calendar sharing here. So you can share between another tenant, another organization, or you can allow individual sharing of calendars. And this is actually on by default. So that means I could share my calendar with you, for example. Okay. Um, add-ins, again, we also have a number of uh, add-ins here. Um, and again, the idea is this is the old portal. There will be more. There'll be more coming in here. So these are some of the new things that will eventually uh, come in here. And you can you can add these in uh, if you want to. Um, public folders, <laughs> public folders never seem to go away, do they? Uh, and one of the things that you can do here is you can convert a public folder to become a Microsoft 365 group. So if you are still using public folders, you might want to not use them anymore. I would consider using a Microsoft 365 group instead. Settings, there's not much in settings um, really at the moment. And as I said, the classic Exchange Admin Center remains at least for a little while longer, um, but that will disappear in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, We also have the Admin Center, but generally... I think I'm really I really like this interface. I think it's really clean. It looks very kind of Microsoft 365-ish. So, you know, it's very familiar uh, to us. So there you have it, some of the cool features that are included in the latest version of Microsoft Exchange Online. Isn't that cool? Hey, look, I really appreciate you stopping by and giving me your attention. Please give me a big thumbs up uh, to show that you like the channel and the video. And if you've not subscribed, go ahead, click on that subscribe button, ring the bell, and you won't miss out on the good stuff in the future. And as always, I love your comments, questions, and feedback. So get them down below and I will do my best to answer your questions. So until next time, you stay safe and I'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and click on the subscribe button and ring that bell and you won't miss a thing. See you next time.